What's going on everybody? In this episode, we're going to talk about on-demand revalidation inside of Next.js. It's pretty important because it'll be used to force a refresh on the cache so that we get the most up-to-date data. Now, if, say, I add something to the database, it's not really a huge deal if someone across the world who's also using the same website doesn't see the data for a few seconds or a minute, or whatever it might be, depending on the use case. However, it is kind of a weird scenario if I add data and I don't see that data for like another minute. It's like I added it, did it not go through, what's going on? So I think in certain scenarios, it's appropriate to invalidate the cache when new data is added. That way, I would see the most up-to-date data and someone from across the world viewing the web page would also get that new up-to-date data. This will allow you to basically force a revalidation when it's necessary instead of on some interval. Next.js has a whole section of this in their documentation and they go through an example of creating an API endpoint where you can invalidate any path. And another thing they note here is that inside of get static props, you do not need to specify revalidate to use on-demand revalidation. So in theory, inside of your code, you could remove this revalidate 60 or whatever it may be entirely and only revalidate when we're specifically invoking revalidate on a specific path. This may potentially reduce unnecessary cache revalidation since now we will only be revalidating when we command our backend to do so. So let's go through an example real quick. First, I wanted to show you what our current backend data looks like. I got rid of some of the junk data from the previous video, and this is what our front end code is going to look like. Now imagine you had a form down here to add new data. You could just take that data and add it to this page with state. However, that's going to go away if we ended up doing a refresh before that cache was invalidated. So that's another reason why forcing the revalidation would be nice. So let's go ahead and test this out. What we will do is we will invoke npm run build as this is how we're going to need to test caching followed by npm run start. So now through our API, we can add some data. So let's say test two and test two for the name and industry. We'll send that data. It was a success and we should be able to retrieve that data from our database. Now you would expect this data to show up on the front end. However, if you go over to the front end and do a refresh, we're not seeing it, even though it's showing up in our API and we can clearly see that it is part of our database right there. So if we added this data and then weren't able to see it ourselves for potentially over a minute, it's kind of awkward. Eventually, we should see that data show up though. And there you go, there it is. So to fix this inside of our API, we will just revalidate this page, which is all of our customers. There is a method on the response object called revalidate, and we can pass in any path in here, such as customers. Saving this, let's try that exercise again making sure that we actually remember to refresh our code with npm run build and npm run start. Now let's go ahead and add some data. Test three, test three, and hit send. We got that data in the database. We should be able to retrieve it from all of our customers list. There we go. Now let's try it out on the front end, do a quick refresh and there's test three. Is this the only page you need to revalidate? Well, I would argue that if you have a page to take in a specific customer ID like so, then you will want to revalidate that path. So let's go ahead and do that here by saying response.revalidate and passing in slash customers slash whatever that object's ID is, which is actually going to be returned from the database as inserted ID. So I'll just say plus inserted ID. You'll see the benefit of revalidating a specific customer's ID page a lot clearer when we actually go to edit a customer with a post request versus adding a new customer. It's fairly hard to predict the object ID for a new customer in order to get a cached 404 page. We were able to do that fairly easily with auto-generated IDs back when we were using Django and SQLite, but with MongoDB, the ID is a little bit more unpredictable. So in theory, if that object ID's page was cached as a 404, we could force a revalidate on that object ID's creation, which I think revalidating on edit is going to make a lot more sense because we'll be able to cache 
older data a lot easier. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which is going to be creating a post request to edit data. This will allow us to update a specific customer in the database and revalidate that page in our application so that we have the most up-to-date data. Stay tuned for that next episode. I think it'll be fun and I'll see you in the next one.